Born in 1945, Richard Hannan followed in his father Harry's footsteps by taking over the family training license in 1970. He inherited just a handful of horses at the time at East Everly Stables in Wiltshire. But as they say, mighty oaks grow from small acorns, and over the course of the next four decades, Hannan built one of the largest training establishments and one of the most successful in the UK. He saddled 32 Royal Ascot winners, 40 Group 1 winners, four Guineas winners in the UK, plus three in Ireland. And his total career tally of 4,145 meant he became the most successful trainer in the UK. In 2013, he was crowned champion trainer for the fourth time with a record total of 235 winners in that year. He retired that year at the very top and handed the license over to his son, Richard. Richard Senior still lives at the Heritage Racing Stables base that he grew and built during the course of a remarkable training career. And it was there that we caught up with him to reflect on some terrific times. Richard, uh, lovely to see you. Um, how are you and how has it been the last year with this pandemic? Well, it's like everybody else. We're all in a little bit of trouble in that We've been fairly lucky with all our staff and everything, you know, that, that, that what I can see of it, and I'm retired, and don't forget, the boys have worked very well and, and everything's everything's gone all right, really. I mean, the people that own the horses uh, like to come down, obviously, and see them and things like that, but it's been very difficult for them. They're paying their training fees mm. every month and they're not getting any crack out of it, if you see what I mean, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that is part of the fun of having a horse here over the well, years. Yes, it's, but they, they're they starting to turn up now. A lot of people coming tomorrow, and we we'll say a lot of people, we've got about six or eight people coming tomorrow. And, and what's it like for you, having been you know master of the helm for all those years, and um, you know, Richard's taken over, Junior's taken over, and he's done pretty well. You must be very proud of him. Absolutely, because I'm not sure whether I could cope with all this now, really this uh, this carry on but you know I mean uh, luckily we got a good office staff there and you've got to get things right before they can go racing and all that sort of thing but it's, it's been difficult all right you know but I it doesn't worry me too much I'm glad every time he has winners I'm glad to see him yeah. you know I still feel that they're a bit of mine you know yeah I bet you do <laughs> are you still involved in any, any way in, in buying them as well, do you, do you give No, advice? I haven't been to the sales for quite a long time now. The last one I bought, oh, the last two or three I bought, I bought one off of Willie Carson, funnily enough, right. when we were talking about him. Yeah. It, uh, it Ascot sales when it was early days, and he turned out a bloody decent horse. It was that Urban Icon? Urban Icon, yeah. yeah. I haven't been to the sales, Newmarket or Doncaster for four or five years now, I suppose. When you went to the sales, and, and in the past you, you were picking out all these future champions with the help of uh, your great pal Peter Doyle, and everybody was sitting back in amazement because you never pay fortunes for them. What was the secret, do you think? No, well, I always like to see a horse. When you go to the sales, you can go from box to box until you get horse sick, really, <laughs> if you like, if you see what I mean. But when you see him walking around the parade ring and things like that, you think, Gee, he's a nice horse. Might have a crack at him, Peter. <laughs> and uh, Peter's always got a list anyway of horses that uh, he thinks could do us. And we we bought them the right money, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you must have sat back and watched other people paying, you know, seven figures and thinking, what's going on here? And what was your what was what's your feeling about that? I mean, I well, listen, horses to me. You didn't go too much through pedigrees. Not me anyway, I just liked a horse. And that was me really. Yeah. And that was Peter as well. We used to go in together and we, had, we bought some very good horses in our time. And they weren't a lot of money as you say. But they are, uh, things have changed. Th well, things have changed, but um, it's a system that worked well for you for a long, long time. Um, can we go back to the beginning? when you took over from um, your father, Harry, in 1970, Richard, you were a yes. young guy then. Um, but 
over at East Everly. We're at Herridge here at the moment, of course. Yeah. But um, what, what was that like when you took over your, your dad's yard? How many did you have? Uh, it was very difficult, really, because he left me about nine horses really right. and it was it was difficult and, and uh, uh, we had to keep going of course there's nothing else you can do any dig ditches <laughs> anyway it gradually built up and we had some decent horses was it always the plan that you'd go and train them once your dad retired oh yeah yeah you wanted to do that yes what was the attraction well, the attraction was I had nothing else to do. <laughs> That's the attraction. But you must have learned a ton from your dad, did you? Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a great man with sprinters. Right. He's real good with them. Yeah, and he was a, quite a character. I wish I'd met him. Yeah. Yeah. I wish he was still here, but they are. They, yeah. People live and people die, don't they? <laughs> But Richard, when you won the guineas on, you know, with Monfils in 73, that, that must have been massively important at the time, wasn't oh, it? It was, yeah. You didn't think you were going to win uh, those sort of races, but we thought we had a good horse. And we fired him. And uh, yeah, he won the guineas. Frankie Durr. Your old mate. And the colours are right behind you. What was that day like? Oh, gee. You, what happens is that when you when you get a day like that, you don't really realise it's happened. You know, you you uh, come back, and you think about it. Christ, it was fine, yeah, and I, we all backed it too. <laughs> you knew you had a good one. Yeah, yeah. He's a great galloper. My father said to me one day, Frank Durr come down to ride him work one day, and we worked him with a with no selling plate called Sid, but he was a good selling plate. <laughs> And Sid took him to pieces. Henry said, you're working that horse the wrong way. You won't let him jump off and let him run. Of course, he, we did that the next time Frank came about a week later. Different horse. Right. And that was interesting because the, the front running is what Don't Forget Me did as well, didn't he? In both English yes. and Irish guineas as well for, for uh, Jim Horgan. Um, yeah, it's another story, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was because he was, he was hopping lame in the morning of the race. Yeah, wasn't what, he? He, what he did, he put his foot on a shoe going up in the box. And punctured his foot and uh, Michael Gorman went up Mike wasn't allowed to go into the yard and they fined him 500 quid for going in the yard without uh, speaking to the resident vet if you like right anyway Mike got it done and what put his foot in a bucket of ice for all morning oh, gee he was up there all night with it for was he? he got up there I rang him up and he got up there within two hours and he was up there and he said, this and that case, as much ice as you can and all this sort of thing and every, everything fine. Turned out, thank God. I remember, I remember the morning of it and, and the there doubt because you didn't even know whether he'd even run as he was cantering down, did you? No, well, I said, that's what I said to Willie Carson. I said, if you don't feel right going down, Willie, withdraw him yeah. at the gate because there's no point in running him then. Anyway, Willie said he moved down like a superstar. <laughs> He came back like one, thank goodness. He was brave. Yeah. And he, and he did the same over at the Curragh as well. That must have been another great day for you. Yeah. He was a good horse. Very good horse. I mean, the Guineas horse is Tyrol, of course, the silks again behind you there, Richard. He won, you know, two or three years later and did the double as well at the Curragh as well, didn't he? You've had many, many top, top milers over the years. Yeah. So many. But that, um, that horse, uh, the, the two brothers, John and Jim. Yeah. I mean, within three years of each other, they won four guineas. <laughs> They're great people to train for too, you know. Yeah. Who was the better horse, Richard? I'd say Tyrrell. Would you? More, more, more gears or? Yes. We worked him over at Barry Hills one day over at Manton. And uh, Pat Edry got off and he said, this will win the guineas. I said, Pat, that's a big statement, you know. Anyway, Pat got retained to ride one of Guy Howard's mm. that won a maiden down at Folkestone. And Pat said, that won't run, I won't let that run, says Pat. <laughs> anyway, he was forced into it, it did run. And um, anyway, we got one of the best jockeys you've ever seen too, uh, Mick uh, Kinane. Yeah. And he came over Mick and he rode him a bit of work, stayed the night and did all this. And everybody very happy. I bet they were. Yeah, apart from Pat. 
from Pat. <laughs> he got a needle. But he did write him in the Irish. At the Curra? Yeah. yeah. He got him back on then, yeah. You had a lot of the top jockeys wanting to ride for you, didn't they? They're all fighting over the hand and rides. Mace Roberts as well. Oh, Mace, I made, it, I made him champion you did. jockey. You did. I'll never forget. He, he couldn't... He was just about doing the weight on one with eight stone bloody six. And I said, how are you going to ride this filly in the, in the Nantort, wasn't it? Lyric fantasy. Lyric fantasy. Don't worry, I'll do the weight. And he did. He one pound overweight. <laughs> Well below eight stone, wasn't it? Seven, seven thir twelve, seven thirteen, seven thirteen was it? Yeah. <laughs> and he beat your other good horse, didn't he? In that, yeah, thing, he did. Mr. Brooks. We were first and second, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Brooks was a very good horse, you know. I don't know. We sent him to America, but that was Lester Piggott's problem. Mm. He he got the owner to send it out there, and I said, "Well, look, look, he's champion sprinter now in England. Why the hell would you want to send him to America?" Anyway, Lester's phone landed on the owner's foot. <laughs> yeah, Paul Green owned him, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that horse had run in the Irish Derby and everything, you know. Amazing. And he was a, Lester said to me, he ain't not staying on, he's a sprinter. <laughs> that was the end of that. So he went over and he he, um, he, he won the Nunthorpe and he won the, sorry, he won the, the Abbey, didn't he, the July Cup? Yeah. And of course, what happened in, Gulfstream was was terrible. Broke his leg, yeah. Yeah, that was awful. Um, you were there that day, Richard. Yes, I was. A lot of tears about that day. Yeah, but, I bet. You know, apparently there's a mound that goes down. He put his foot down one of the side there. I don't know what he did really, but he broke his leg, and he's never he never saw a vet in his life that horse. What a shame! What a shame. There's nothing wrong with him. He yeah. just put his foot in the wrong place, and there. Did that, did that affect your uh, regard of the Breeders' Cup meeting, that, that incident? Well, yeah, I'm not a big fan of going there anyway, but... Right. It's, it's not me. I was... It did, listen, everybody goes there now because it's the younger mm. people that are coming through now that would want to go, you know, but I, I wouldn't want to go. Well, let's talk about happier days. Yeah, of course. Because on. there are plenty of those, yeah, fortunately. But so, as I mentioned earlier, so many great milers, Richard. I mean, you know, old Paco Boy was a great favourite of mine. And he was a great favourite of mine too. I yeah. loved him. Yeah, I remember every time he turned out in that ring in front of us here now. Yeah. I promise you, he couldn't trot sound. <laughs> he, you think, and you have him X-rayed and done everything with him, and there's nothing wrong with him basically. And he he was a good horse because he he would race. And he's got a, he had a great turn of foot. And I loved him, I thought he was a lovely horse, because he used to turn upside down when he got to the races. <laughs> he was a different horse. Unbelievable, yeah. really. Yeah. He was a cracker. And um, I remember you got very emotional when I interviewed you on the box after you won the lock in at Newbury. That was, a, that was yeah. quite a day for you, wasn't it? It was. I, I mean, I loved the horse, that's why. Yeah, yeah, one of your all-time favourites. He was like a... Old boxer kept coming good on the day. <laughs> <laughs> I love this turn of foot as well, and yeah, he usually rode him brilliantly. Turn of foot. But yeah. he could never beat Goldie Cover, could he? No, but the other horse did, didn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, you found one that did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that must have been sweet. Uh, Can Canford Cliffs, but yeah. Richard, would he, would he go down as the best you've, you've trained? Well, he won five group ones, didn't he? So he has to be one of the best. Mm. You know, he was, a, he was a very good horse. And Richard Hughes sat on him here one morning and he said, this is different class, Richard. This is different class. I said, well, we've only worked up to you. He said, I'm telling you, this was a different class. And he was right. Before he'd even run, he knew. Before he'd even run. We took yeah. him to Newbury and he won about four or five lengths there. <laughs> then he won to Coventry and everything. He was a good horse. He won that by six lengths or something, didn't he? Yeah. 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 So Camford Cliffs, off he goes, to pity he couldn't take on to beat Frankel, but do you think he could have given him a proper race though, if he'd been yeah, sound Yeah, he, he went wrong coming down the hill, yeah. my fella. And uh, we got him back and found he had a shadow on his, one of his joints. And I said to John, I don't really get him trying to run this horse again in case he does something really nasty to his day. Mm. So and the vet said to me, you know, with through the x-rays and things like that, he said, oh, be bloody careful with him. Yeah. 
I said, well, look, the best thing we can do, he's done enough really, let's pack him up. And I rang John Magna because he had a big share in him. And I said, John, I think it's time to send him home. He said, whatever you want, Richard. You know, he's a great man to deal with, John. Yeah. yeah. And now he's getting loads of winners at Cornwall. Yeah, well, he's, he's two in a row because they sent him to India and places or somewhere like that, South Africa or, yeah. or somewhere. But he's, now he's started to produce winners everywhere. <laughs> Do you think he was a bit of a freak, Richard, wasn't he? I mean, he was... Well, the pedigree didn't say he was going to be as good as he was. No. Then, let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah, indeed, yeah. But what he, a star. he was a bloody star, all right? Good-looking horse. Yes. Again, that, again, that's where, you know, you, you say you look at him first, then look at the pedigree after. Yeah. That was I a, didn't a great... sell him to after Christmas. Really? <laughs> Nobody wanted him. Yeah. And yeah, he's the best-looking horse you've ever seen. <laughs> and I sold him to Robin Effer in the end. And uh, Robin took him. But he didn't want to pay the back mm. training fees since September when we bought him at Doncaster. I said, well, you've got to pay that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I said, otherwise I ain't going to sell him. Anyway, that was it. Well, he'd have been a happy boy. Anyway, he told me that he'd give me 10% of what he made if he, whatever he made as a stallion. Well, that's handy. I came up smelling the roses. Yeah. <laughs> And at the end of my time, I'd done as much as I could. Now, Richard was coming forward, and he, he's very good at his job. And uh, he's turned it round. He's, he's gone great, but he can cope with all these people there that, you know, which I didn't have at the time, you know. But I well, the my... staff, the office staff, you mean? No, you? the owners. All the owners. Yeah, but you had owners coming down to here and eating Joe's sausages and stuff and drinking your champagne. and st you, you, It was famous for its hospitality, your place. Yeah, it always has been, but then, then that's what people, especially now, yeah. if they start coming now, you know, they, they've got to have it. You've got to show them something. Mm. Quite exhausting, though, isn't it, looking after all these owners? No, it's not for me, because no. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> but in the I old days. The, I, won the, I run the arrivals lounge and the departure lounge. <laughs> <laughs> but Richard, when you set when you set out, I mean, you know, we talked about having you know a handful of horses at the yard down the road. You couldn't have imagined you'd end up training over four thousand winners and setting a UK record. No, it was it was staggering. It was good, but we bought the right horses. You know that, you know they were good, tough animals. Yeah. In other words, you could run them every two weeks, and they kept winning, which is which is great, really. But. Yeah, we, and we had some, well, I had some very good owners in my time. Why, why do you think that um, you never went close to winning the derby? What was the... Well, we didn't buy those sort of those horses. Those types of horses, yeah. You know, we yeah. didn't buy horses, that, uh, trip horses. Well, Richard does a bit now. And we didn't buy them, we bought them to race. And they wanted them to race as two-year-olds, most of these people, you see. So we did that. But it wasn't as if you couldn't train them. You had a very good stare called Assessor, didn't you, a few years yes, ago? Yes, yeah. It belonged to Beyond Nielsen. Yes. That was his first good horse. Yeah. I remind him of that every time I see him. <laughs> <laughs> he won the French Ledger, didn't he? And won the, the, the French Gold Cup. Yeah, he won the pre... The Cadran. Cadran and everything. Yeah. He was a good horse. Yeah. But I ran him in the derby. And he started very nearly favour for the derby, but he wasn't quick enough. Right. Was the answer to that really? And as soon as we started going further, better horse, you know. Yeah. Did you enjoy training him? I mean, the likes of him. Oh or? yeah, yeah, Kirky. Yeah. Listen, I spoke to a man one day called Bob Turnell, who I loved. I used to go and ride out there a couple of times a week and think, try and learn something, you know. And I said to him, Governor, I've never seen you work a horse over a mile, you know. And he had horses like Salmon Spray and the Laird and all those. Yeah. He said, don't worry, boy, he said to me, uh, their pedigrees are telling me how they're going to go, <laughs> which way they're going to go. Pedigrees are going to tell you, but as long as you've got them fit, that's all you need to do, get them fit. And well, that wasn't a problem for you, was it? You no. always had them fit. Yeah, no. Yeah. They were grand. They stood there training. Yeah. Do you think that's, that's a reflection of your personality, Richard? Because, I mean, you are so laid back about things at least you seem to be about everything i don't know yeah but at the time you know we 
we always put them through the stalls very early in their yeah. life, you know. I mean, when we buy them, get them broken and things like that. And Richard took it on as well. You, every day you come in, well, not every day, but most days you come in, you're walking through the end of the barn there, through the stalls, out the other end, fine. And it doesn't frighten them then when mm. they go in the stalls. It doesn't panic them, in other words. But that's the way we do it. Mm. Let's talk about some of the fillies that you've trained. I mean, we've m mentioned Lyric Fantasy briefly already. I mean, Lord Carnarvon also had Le Lemon Souffle, didn't he? Niche was a good filly as well. And Niche was one of the worst days in my life. Go on. When she got killed on the road. Oh. She got loose one morning, and it was only because a rabbit came out and ran underneath her. And then she stood there for a bit. I thought, well, that's okay. We're going to catch her now. She took off home, and she ran across the road, and a bloody, my blacksmith, Hit her. What about Sky Lantern? Sky Lantern was down to Richard a bit. It was bought by Ed, Ed uh, Sackville. Yeah. And uh, she all of a sudden came good. And yeah, that was down to Richard and Ed, really. Finally got your 1,000 guineas ticked off. Yeah. That was nice to do that. Yes, it was. And wasn't she good at Royal Ascot as well? That oh, was yeah. a spectacular performance. Yeah, one of the best ones we had was, what was that called? It belonged to Raymond Tooth. Indian Ink. Indian Ink. Yeah, tell me about her. Well, I bought it for 25 grand up at Newmarket <laughs> one day, and and uh, oh, but she just came good, you know, and I thought, well, I don't want to sell her now. Then Toothy came on the phone and said he would like to buy her. I said, well, you can buy her. So that gives us another chance to go back and buy another one. Yeah. But uh, she finished up being sold for two million odd. Unbelievable. And she won over 600 grand in yeah. prize money. She did. She won the Chiefly part, didn't she? Did, she? did she miss out on the guineas? Did she run on the guineas, Richard? I can't remember. Yeah, well, he usually didn't ride a very good race on her in the, right. in the guineas. Right. <laughs> there was all sorts of trouble about it. They wanted other jockeys to ride. I rang him up, Raymond. I said, Raymond, the jockeys that your man, your manager, is trying to employ wouldn't even know what colour she was. I said, no, I'm telling you. You leave it where it is. Anyway, he says, no problem with me, Richard. I said, well, that's fine then. Then she goes and wins the big race at Royal Ascot. The coronation. Yeah. Was she better with a bit of dig in the ground as well? Yes. So she was another good one that you trained. Yes. She yeah. was very good, yeah. I, mean, I know you've had loads of great days, and, and you mentioned a couple of sad days as well, but I bet the day that Free Agent won for Her Majesty in the Chesham, that must have been right up there. That was a good day, yes, because HM hadn't had a winner there for quite a long time and then yeah. all of a sudden this one arrived, thank goodness. And I remember they're going there and, and the old Duke of Edinburgh there, a great man, he, 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 Richard came in with the goggles, which were technicolour things, and he said to him, can you see through them views? <laughs> And Richard said, I hope so, sir, for your sake. <laughs> it was a good day. It was a very yeah. good day. And every, everybody in the crowd, too, was so happy for her, you know. Yeah, oh, it was a super day. I remember yeah. being there. Yeah. How did you feel when you were told that you were going to be trained for the Queen, Richard? What was, how did that, that come about? That came through Lord Carnarvon. And uh, I bought a horse off him one day at Dungas of Sales, and he said, you train that horse for me, I'll make sure you've got a very good owner coming to you next year. <laughs> and I sort of suspected that. So he's, it all happened from there, really. Yeah, it was a natural thing, really, because you got on very well with Lord Carnarvon, of course, didn't you? Oh, it was very well. Yeah. Great man to train for. And, and If he made a plan for a horse, yeah. you stuck to it. It didn't matter whether Nijinsky ran. If you made a plan for it, the horse is okay, take it on. Perfect. Yeah, that's what you need. That's and you, um, need. You, you get on very well with, with Her Majesty, no doubt. I mean, I, 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 can't, wish, I can't imagine you get on not well with anybody, to be honest with you. But uh, She's a, a good buddy of mine, really. That yeah. I used to ring her up occasionally and tell her stories and things like that. She loved that, you know, when she had a runner and thing. But I was told not to ring her again. Did you, were you? <laughs> Only 
When? I could ring after a race and not before. Right. Her <laughs> Majesty op opened this, this owner's an office for you as yeah, well, didn't I, she, on I her struck birthday? it lucky one day. She came yeah. down on her birthday. And uh, we were all out there. And I came to my head. I thought, well, I'll get her to open the office. Mm. She said she wouldn't mind doing that at all. So we had a photograph taken outside and, and everything like that. She was brilliant. She's a lovely woman. Still a good friend? Yes. Good. Oh, yes. It's never been a problem with me and her. Yeah, great. In fact, she said some things that you wouldn't believe, really. <laughs> <laughs> Which will remain with you, no doubt, Richard. Well, um, it's, it's easy to tell. <laughs> because she said to me one day, I said, Ma'am, what do you think of your horses? And she said, look marvellous. And funny enough, she picked one out and it got beat that far at Royal Ascot. And I can't remember what it was called now, but it, anyway, she picked it out and said, I love that horse. Anyway, she was dead right. And uh, she, as we're walking back through, I said, you, you like your horses then, ma'am? She said, yes. Do you know, Richard, it's quite nice to come to a place that doesn't smell of paint. <laughs> Which I, it bowled me over, you know. <laughs> I wonder what she meant by that then. Well, because everywhere she goes, I suppose. Everybody's been spruced everywhere up, you mean? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Richard, tell me a bit about your, your, um, your you dabbled in training jumpers, didn't you? And, yeah. and, it, and you did it well too. You had a few. I had some good hurdlers, yeah. 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 What, what appealed to you about that? I don't know. Gran Alba I had at the time. He was a good yeah. horse. Gran Alba. Um, what was the other one? Right win. Yeah, he won his, he won his uh, race first time up in a listed race at Sandown. He yeah, was a good amazing. horse too. You had some great one winners. Yeah. You didn't carry on with that though, did it not appeal? We didn't, didn't no, have the time? I, or? No, I had a lot of flat horses at the time yeah. where, they, where they were starting to come in, two year olds and things like that. And they, they pleased me, two year olds. I quite like to see them. Yeah. It's like new heads over boxes, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I bet that gives you a kick. Yeah, even it now, does every year. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And Richard, when you look back, I mean, you, you, your career is magnificent and, um, you know, numerically and tons of top, top winners. What's the proudest achievement for you? I mean, apart from the heritage, which is fantastic and fabulous, what, what, what's, some, what, what's something you look back on with a bit of pride? I think it's the way we've worked it up, really. Yeah. Into where it's become. As one of the top yards. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and any regrets over the years? Not really. No. I've had no problems. Yeah. And you've, your family is fantastic. You, you must be. Yeah, they're good kids, and they're all proud working, of the kids. Working away well, and everything's fine, you know. Yeah. Could you see at an early stage that Richard, who was one of the triplets, of course, could you see that he'd be the one that would take over from you? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, he was yeah. always going to be the one, really, because Henry went into the property business and estate agencies and all that sort of thing. I don't know really. Well, and a few he's, quid in that. he's still at it now. <laughs> he's doing all right too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're all doing well. Good. And Claire is still in Barbados? Yes, they're doing well as well. Well, they were to this thing came along, this pandemic or whatever, and they couldn't, they couldn't uh, then use the boats and the catamarans and, yeah. and all that sort of thing, you know? So that, and the grandkids must give you a lot of pleasure as well, do you think? Yeah, well, they're up here quite often. I mean, there was two or three of them stayed with us the other night. Hughes, these ones. Harvey's a lovely boy. So it, so they're all lovely kids. They're fine. I got no argument with any of them. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, I can't tell you what it's, how much of a pleasure it's been to see you and uh, to get your, get your time. I know you're always busy and in demand. I'm uh, not busy. It's, uh, are you enjoying retirement? Yes, it's different, and I'm probably lucky that I got it at the right time, really, because I couldn't stand all this that Richard has to stand now. Yeah. I mean, he stands for quite a lot of people and and things like that, and he's got to, you've got to be on the phone to him all the time, all the time, you know. It's, it's not easy for him. No. But I was just thinking, you know, the final point I'm going to make, you got out at the very top, didn't you? You, you were champion again. Yeah. And uh, you'd had three titles in four years or something crazy, and, and you trained the most winners in your final season 
235 or whatever it was, some crazy number. And then on the back of that, Richard takes over and becomes champion the following year. Yeah, that didn't worry me. It's all in the same family. Yeah, great though, isn't it? Yes. Who would have thought it? I told you, Johnson overtook me, you know, my record. Yeah. And I said, yeah. They, I had a thing from one of his men that writes the magazine. I said, if I'd have stayed on another two years, he wouldn't have beat me, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you rang him up to tell him, did you? I, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, well done. Well, I didn't ring Johnson. I yeah. rang the man that sent me. magazine. Him. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Well, the Hannon family and legacy is, is, is healthy yes, and strong, which is great. Very happy. Yeah, good. Uh, things are going good.